bacteria, this occurs rather than research on this uh, oyster species. Yes. are particularly receptive to these messages. been fascinated with cheese I think because you're um, really transforming milk into so many different products you have the same starting material but as a result of microorganisms or manipulations you end up with thousands of different varieties of things we call cheese Many of the famous cheese varieties originated centuries ago. And we didn't really understand the contribution of microorganisms. Today we do and use very sophisticated means of either preparing bacterial starter cultures, beneficial organisms that produce lactic acid that contribute to the coagulation and desired characteristics of cheese. And so microorganisms in cheese are very symbiotic and so the role of microorganisms is indispensable in cheese making. And then for me specifically, I'm interested in improving the safety of cheeses, um, making sure that we can forward traditional practices in this time of food safety challenges. One thing that's remarkable compared to other food commodities, you see very few cheese-related outbreaks. The Centers for Disease Control published a review article um, a few years ago, and that was what they concluded is, we found the absence of large cheese-associated outbreaks to be remarkable, because compared with other food commodities, that's not the norm. But when studies have been done looking at um, times where cheeses made from pasteurized milk have been involved in outbreaks, we realize the most significant threat to cheese safety isn't the use of raw milk. It's actually post-process recontamination, either from the aging environment, introduction by humans of pathogens on their hands after the cheese is made. And so it's really that recontamination that poses a threat. And so where that becomes significant is it's irrelevant whether the cheese has been made with raw or pasteurized milk. If you don't protect that product from recontamination, you can have some problems. For instance, um, an organism, Staphylococcus aureus, it lives on our hands. It um, lives in the udders of cows. It's an important cause of mastitis. That's probably the organism that causes the most problem in cheeses. Staph aureus can produce a very heat-stable enterotoxin, and so if you allow the organism to grow to high population levels where you have the production of the toxin, it's very difficult to get rid of and will make people sick. Other organisms that we're concerned about include listeria, um, especially with Hispanic-style cheeses and the soft-ripened cheeses. Occasionally we see outbreaks linked to salmonella and very rarely E. coli. And so whenever you see cheese and safety, cheese is not cheese is not cheese. And those inherent characters of cheese dictate a very low risk microbiologically or a very high risk depending on how the cheeses are manufactured. <laughs> general overall system um, in a farmhouse cheese making facility you have your animals whether they're sheep, goat, cow, water buffalo all there on the farm um, they're being milked every day twice a day sometimes maybe more often or less often and then as the milk is being pulled going into the vat it's being made immediately either that day or the next morning depending on if it's morning milk or evening milk it's either then pasteurized or not pasteurized Pasteurization is a way to really prevent certain bacteria from growing in the milk, heating it up to a certain temperature for a long period of time or for a very short period of time. In an artisan's small farm, their practices are very clean, very sanitary. Uh, so by not pasteurizing it, there isn't a huge risk of a very bad contamination of the milk. Because really it's all with their hands, and there you have culture, you have rennet being added to the cheese. 
to kind of give it the style that you want, whether it's animal rennet, traditional rennet, vegetarian rennet. And then from there, you know, we can drain the cheese, draining the whey from the curds to make a really soft cheese in a natural way. Pressing the wheel into a form of like a cheddar where you're really draining it and trying to get as much moisture out of it as possible. There are so many different styles that can be made from that first product. So that is a general approach to uh, farmhouse cheese making. One problem that the cheesemaker is always confronted with are viruses that live in the cheesemaking environment. They're called bacteriophage, and they specifically attack bacterial starter cultures that you're depending on to produce acid, lower the pH, and help coagulate the cheese. If you get a bacteriophage attack, you have a dead vat of cheese, and you basically have to dump all your milk, and so it's a huge economic problem for cheesemakers. So what cheesemakers do is keep their environment absolutely sanitary to eliminate sources of bacteriophage. They chlorine fog their environments, they clean, they sanitize. Those measures to eliminate bacteriophage eliminate bacterial pathogens as well. And so that in part, plus the use of starter cultures, um, technical training, all of this really contributes to cheese being a safe product. Zoom it rapidly.